Spoiler alert! And place see, I can't see it. <laughs> this is a spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear any spoilers, put your fingers in your ears. Great to go there. One of those locations that is known to the audience because it was made famous, amongst other things, by Harry Potter films. So a place very, very used to all sorts of uh, you know, tourism and film production and a very, very professionally run business, actually. And great to go to that part of the UK, or that part of Northern England, which is an incredibly beautiful part of England, very ancient. And I was struck by its beauty and the, the warmth of the people who, uh, who looked after us there. Great minds think alike. What do you say we take a moment to think of Sybil? With the three left on Earth who loved her the most. I think it was the last scene we shot. And it was interesting. I think it was talked about that it was Mary who was going to take Edith's hand. And Michelle was like, I don't think that's right. I think it should be Edith. Darling Sybil. Because Edith has been more vulnerable, she can't hide her vulnerable moments. She's been exposed too many times. So I think she is the one who is able to reach out and risk her not taking her hand. Suppose you want to move away and change your life entirely. You don't want to be stuck with me. But that's the point. What is? I do want to be stuck with you. It was beautifully written. And it was great fun because I, Jim and I get on very well. It was just a nice scene to play together. I'm not convinced I can be hearing this right. You are if you think I'm asking you to marry me. We love it when we have a tete-a-tete, -a -tete, like we sit and drink our little sherries or, you know, have a cup of tea or something. We always like those scenes. I suppose this was a bit more intense than a little sherry, but... Well? Knock me down with a feather. Oh, yeah, there were, it, not a dry eye in the house, really. I mean, that one's been brewing for a long time, let's face it. And uh, I think uh, the, the way that, uh, that Jim Carter and uh, Phyllis play that is so beautifully pitched. It would seem very funny to suddenly go from Mr. Carson, Mr. Carson, Mr. Carson to Charlie or Mrs. Hughes, Elsie. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> Where will they live? How will the fact that they've both been these sort of great leaders, now they're a married couple, how will that change the way all the servants are governed? I think it raises a lot of questions about what the future below the stairs is, is going to mean. Of course I'll marry you, you old booby. I thought you'd never ask. Well done. But you didn't sound drunk at all. How did you do that? Concentration. You forget. I was trained as a soldier. There should be a sense of it's the holidays, it's family time, and that let's be upset the fact we know that Tom is going, but he's not going quite yet. He's going tomorrow. Or, you know, there's a lot of things that are about to change, but let's just enjoy the moment while we're here. As, as usual with Julian Fellows' orchestra, there are all so, so many different tunes going on. You'll feel the sombre moments, and I defy anyone who loves these characters not to be touched by that beautiful moment at the end when Mr. Bates emerges from the shadows. Happy Christmas. <laughs> and sort of looking round as we were stood there at the Christmas tree and, and looking at Mrs. Patmore and Daisy and Lady Mary, I did think, oh, I wonder what he's got up his sleeve, that Julian. I wonder what he's got up his sleeve for us all. Well, I hope that, you know, as with every year, we, we've parked characters in a certain place at the end. We take them forward in the next season. And there's certainly a lot of balls still in the air at the end of the season. I think there's a lot of relationships to be resolved next year. But of course, it sets up season six. <laughs> <laughs>